Welcome back to the Amazon European Masters. We have our sixth game of the night. It is Penta versus Trix. Neither team can escape from this group now, but it is their final chance to show what they've got at the European Masters. And for the players, that is important. This is their stage. This is where they can stand and show to everyone watching what they're capable of. And especially for Trix, you know, I think especially with the performance of their bot lane through this tournament, they'll be wanting to go out with an absolute bang. For Penta, as Foxy said, you never want to end on 0-6. It's another important chance to erect that scoreline yeah especially when you're coming out of an ERL that isn't one of the, like the smaller ones the dark region is, is huge dark region has won EU masters before in order if you were to come out with zero wins absolutely it would be a massive disappointment for Penta and this is their chance to kind of swap that one around right here and for tricks we're obviously very biased as NLC casters ourselves but still you know you do want to see these guys just uh, come out on a high They've worked so hard to get to here, and it's their, it's the organization's first time. It's the it's the, a lot of the players' first time as well. So, really want to see them guys. We want to see them end and on the best night possible. We've seen some of those moments just from the games today. Unfortunately, Penta not strong enough to deal with the power of Monster Riders. But what I will say is that I think they made it closer than it probably should have been for a long time that game. Uh, yeah. One of the impressive things that they were able to do was keep the gold lead so competitive until that very final moment. It was really only a two or 3,000 gold lead for the majority of the game. I specifically remember talking about it at 30 minutes and saying, 2K is what we would call a relatively negligible gold lead here. And I think that is something that Penta did really well in their game. Tricked on blue side. Penta on red. We're heading into their final showing here at the European Masters. Let's see what both teams decide to do, whether we get more jungle focus in these bands, pick some bands. Seems to be the way to go, honestly. Both teams have decided to do a lot of that. You know, obviously, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but the Viego, Lee Sin, Sin Zhao and Trundle being the most popular ones that have come through. For Trix as well, specifically, their bot lane has been absolutely disgusting. Really, really good. Their box lane's had massive carry potential, uh, carry performances, I should say. And uh, so PTA might want to put a bit of focus on making it hard for them to do that. Yeah, uh, things that he would default onto include things like the Aphelios, the Ezreal. Those are champions that he, we know that he can perform on, know that he can carry on. Uh, and so those are things that might see targets, uh, even in the second ban phase, if Trick don't choose to prioritize their bot lane early on. Jace taken off the table here, as you mentioned, Lee Sin. Wonder what the final ban will be. Zin Zhao has seen a ban, but it is Irelia that gets taken away. And that now leaves things open. Zin is open for Taxa. Rise is prioritized, though. That goes over to Pulse. Rise is a really good blind pick. You can pick him into loads of different uh, team comps. So just slapping that one down. Also a good takeaway from Phantomless, who has been, in my opinion, PTA's best player. Cassio is the answer into that Rise. Very strong in that lane in the 1v1. and can get some good gank set up as well. With that Viego, going to be pretty scary stuff. These picks are coming through hard and fast. There is going to be that Trundle pick. And the Aphelios, as you mentioned, for Den Voxne. We'll see whether PTA decides to ban away something like the Thresh, maybe even the Braum or a Khan in that second ban phase. Yeah, it would be the the sensible option here. That will be Taxa very likely taking the Trundle, though. We have seen it flex to support in certain situations. It might be Gangplank here for Scarface. They're going to blind both of their solo laners and leave their bot lane under wraps for the time being, which might now allow Trick to kind of focus down on some of the AD carries that they don't want to see in this comp. Yeah, you want to get rid of things that have hard engage uh, if you are tricked. But I would, honestly, I would I would just look towards to, uh, like so, the solo lanes. Not the solo lanes, sorry. I would look towards getting away. There's, there's the thresh for, for PTA. Just just trying to get as like protected as you possibly can if you are if you are the uh, the affiliates in this comp. Like whether you can secure yourself a good support that does that, and also just in general like from your top lane. I'm assuming this rise is going mid. You know whether you can have more of like a frontline champion. Getting rid of some of that engage already from that bot side is uh, is very key here for some people. The cannon that gets taken away. So they're only concerned about the Thresh uh, for the time being. I think the Gangplank does make tanks a little bit more awkward to play on the top side. It just basically gives a free lane over to Gangplank. So uh, things like the Orn, which would be, I, th I think Orn would be a really nice option for Madly here if he wanted it. That is going to be uh, something that's a little harder to play, although not impossible, of course. It really, you know, you're really playing for team at that point, realistically. Uh, Ash off the table. Where do we see Caitlyn go? So Funky's not going to have Caitlyn. Varus already gone. Ash is banned. Tristana is an 
option. Haven't seen too much of her lately, but she's definitely on the cards and will get locked in here. And now Tricks have their top laner and uh, support to go for. As you said, a good option might be that Braum if they want it. Uh, I, I well like the tank. Yeah, I like I like potentially looking towards the Rakan here because there's a lot of jump in from PTA. Mm -hmm. And I think Rakan just counters that really well. Like you pop down the quickness to jump in and suddenly people jumping into you are now all like spinning around because they're charmed and stuff. So it provides a lot of protection for the team. Oh, it's going to be that Wukong in the top side for Madly. He's gone TP Ignite as well. Okay, that's definitely a lane he's not looking to chill out in. Taxa now has his targets in this game. He knows where he wants to play. Yeah, absolutely. And Madly played this in the NLC quite a lot as well. Had really good success with it. And it is a team fight tool. You know, a very strong team fight tool that can set up and defend for the Aphelios, peel for the Aphelios nicely. If that's Lulu, this is an Aphelios comp through and through. Realistically, it will be the Leona, though, that gets locked in. So some engage coming through. Not exactly very peel heavy. Not exactly, as you said, forming a bubble around Aphelios. But as we saw last game, sometimes it just don't. It's just not needed. Yeah. You know, you, you just have the right. You have the right gun combinations, and Aphelios doesn't need no 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 support to help him. He's a strong, independent AD carry. That he is. Yeah. I, yeah. We'll see how this one plays out because that is definitely a bit more of the aggressive side of thing from Trick. They decided to rather than and just turtle back and bubble up and, and just play through Aphelios and said they're going to actually bring the fights to PTA more. And uh, it's, it's it, it, you like to see that. It's, it's more it's more aggression coming through from Tricked. And I think when you've got the combos and you know, all like that, Wukong flying in there, Ryze getting loads of AoE damage with the Aphelios and like some good engage in general, it can definitely work out. On the side of PTA, of course, you have like slap down that Gangplank ulti and you just dog pile in. Trisana jumps in, Alistair jumps in, Casio slinging out skill shots, Viego's going to jump in as well. Like, it's just uh, it, yeah, it, it, it's a lot of forward momentum from both these teams. We'll see. Both teams would like to get a win. You can see these comps have been crafted. Penta with a little bit more off the wall. Not Don't see as much of this from any other team other than Penta right now. Uh, but they've got very strong kind of AoE teamfight control as well. Plenty of opportunities to find resets for that Tristana. Whereas, as we said, it's just all in. Like literal balls to the wall, wall style composition here for Trick. Just you throw everything at them. And that is an, a an aviation phrase, Foxtrot, before you say anything. <laughs> Didn't say anything. <laughs> Didn't say of it, bro. <laughs> now, speaking of you talking about games of inches and now I'm talking about balls to the wall, oh, but no, it, aviation phrase here and, and tricked. It is throw everything into that team fight, you know, just facilitate their boxing as best you can through pure CC. That it is, my man, that it is. Den Boxing has been a hard carry for tricked. And we just saw a massive hard carry performance from the last game, OD on that Aphelios is now Den Boxing. See if he can repeat the same kind of thing. It was very powerful. And we saw that, you know, with the Severin, when you have the, the red gun, you can jump in actually on, on Aphelios, and uh, especially with the, when you compare it with the fire gun too. Are we going to have a dance party, or is this going to be oh, a dance party? It's a dance party. They've obviously asked for a dance party in all chat. <laughs> Come on, lads. That's what yeah. we like to see, lads. Beautiful. Who's got the best moves here? Trisana's got some decent moves, I'm not going to lie. Cassio, you're absolutely crap, mate. Go home. Uh, yeah, I think that's a spinning. I, I quite like. I, know, I quite like the spin. Yeah, Cassio. Unfortunately, it's a terrible dance. Yeah, yo, the best dance in the history of League of Legends, by the way, was Old Swain. If you haven't seen this, you know, watching at home. I know. Maybe don't do it right now because we've got a great game of League of Legends coming up. But do it at some point. I promise you won't regret it. Old Old Swain. Google Old Swain's dance. You know, he walked around on his little walking stick. He drops the walking stick and just starts funking out. It's absolutely beautiful. Does Old Swain do hammer time? I can't remember which uh, what uh, dance because a lot, a lot of the a lot of the dances are based on like you know yeah. famous dances, right? So yeah, I don't know actually. That's a good question. I don't really remember what he does specifically. I just know he drops the cane and just starts going. Oh, that's a little bit aggressive there. Leon goes in for the flash. Then Voxnay way too far up on that Felios. You'll take the Alistair flash for the Felios flash very early on here. Especially because you have that hex flash available for Leon, so you still have that ability to catch people out. And normally you would say, okay, no flash, Alistair. That means we're pretty safe here. There goes the engage from PTA. Nah, you got a Tristana. The other, the other bot laner, pretty much the only AD carry that's going to engage just as hard as the support does. If Funky can jump in on that on that Tristana as well, you're still going to be in a lot of trouble if you're Denmark Scarface just... Uh... Zoning out a little bit here. I think we still have, um, this is still a patch where yeah, Gangplank's uh, 
Yeah, 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 before the Gangplank reworks. So we still have that ability. Oh, this is a, a good little bit of pressure onto Phantomless. Not going to gift him a kill early on like Max Law did in the previous game. But <laughs> I was in, just going to say, Max yeah. Law, if you're watching this, take notes. <laughs> this is how you get a Casio, mate. Oh, I saw it after his game, he tweeted out, nothing happened before level three, don't worry, guys. <laughs> what a lad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this is right. the uh, this is before the, the gangplank rework where they kind of make it so that his uh, pile A can't proc grasp with the undying, right? So still yeah, yeah. still in a good spot in these uh, these melee versus ranged matchups. Absolutely, still very very difficult to play against. Wukong gonna be struggling a little bit in this uh, this stage of the lane. Really, the power of the Wukong comes in those uh, when when he gets level six when he gets the ulti. Here comes the engage and tricked. They're going on to Leon. He doesn't have that flash available. That's a beautiful pillar from Taxa, but he'll be forced to flash in once more. They've got to find the final blow. It'll be Taxa that gets first blood. Rolfchen has made his way down though, and that is a very low HP Taxa. Lucky has a plenty of CC to apply though, so not going to go as aggressive as he maybe thought. Although I say that, Taxa has walked directly into the path of Rolfchen here. Ooh, he's going for it. And Rolfchen is actually going to look to steal away some of these camps. May see a collapse from the Aphelios and the Leona Taxa here. Actually, yeah, Taxa got it, so Rolfchen's just gonna have to walk away. Shame for shame, Rolfchen. <laughs> gonna be forced to burn his flush, I think. Yeah. And he does. That was a bit questionable right there. You don't win the 1v1 against Trundle. One of the massive strengths of this champion is that you just beat the crap out of everyone. Viego included, 2021 champs included. And uh, once once Trundle had smited that and gotten all that health back, I think Rolfchen just didn't really have that much business being there. Said it's going to lose that flash and going to go for this top crab. It would be a double crab if he can get it. Leon has provided priority in this mid lane. Yeah, and they have got the, uh, as you said, the roaming support to help them out. Rolfchen's got a Hex level flash. disadvantage here. He's going to hedge flash over the wall. They're going to try and catch him out, but Lucky is here, has joined the party just in time. And Rolfchen with no flash to his name will drop to Lucky. Something about Leonis today, getting kills left, right, and center. Taxi will pick up his second. Now Phantomless could be at the mercy of Madly as they flash forward, get the root, and Phantomless drops. I'll tell you what, tricked. They're not here to play, mate. That is a very, very good start for them. Absolutely. Four kills in five minutes for Tricked. Almost a 2k gold lead right there. And everyone on the side of Tricked is getting in on the fun. Everyone is contributing. And it's really disaster for PTA. A little bit greedy, to be honest, right here. Like this chase, I mean, you've got to know that the enemy support is most likely roaming this time. Yeah, it was good for you to get that first roam timer. You got there early. That's great. You've created the priority. But the longer you stay around, you realize the enemy is coming for you, right? And that's exactly what happened. Lucky shows up. This is a good kill as well, because Fentanus does have his flash still. Paulson doesn't give him any opportunity to get away. Mali doesn't even use his ignite. And Tricked now sitting on an almost 2,000 gold lead at this stage of the game. They're feeling pretty happy. Funky has been farming by himself for the uh, time being, but hasn't really get any, got any noticeable advantage over Denvoxne. And uh, Lucky has been much more effective in his roam so far. Scarface really the only benefactor of that roam as he's able to get a plate and some experience his way. Madly, obviously a little bit further behind at this point because he made that roam over towards Phantomless. He is, and getting an early six on Gangplank is pretty imp Oh, wow, so they're going in. I mean, he's just going in. That is going to be the Gangplank ultimate use, but Madly knows his power spikes, and he knows them well. He just goes in with the Ignite. Okay. And crushes Scarface. I was a little bit deceived by Madly's CS totals there. He must have soaked a lot of XP in mid lane, not just from that kill, but from the minions as well. Phantomless should be able to walk away. Yeah, Taxa here will... Uh have to back off though, can't go for the tower dive just yet, not quite level six. Phantomless, burning the flash from the Cassiopeia is more than appropriate though, and it's also given a huge amount of priority to allow Trick to go for a very easy dragon if they want to. Well, they might just run down bot for a cheeky attempt. I think PT are gonna be able to get out of this one level three on the Alistair. Oof, he's definitely be walking around. I'm, I'm just, I'm a bit, I'm a bit, a bit dismayed with the way that PTA have died with their solo laners here. I'm just going to hold this thought as Leon's just going to walk away. Both Phantomless and Scarface died while having their flash up. And if they are saving flash for next game, well, bad news. There's not going to be one as tricks go in. Yeah, lucky. Doesn't take too much damage, though. And he's able to back away with ease. Leon did think he could knock him, knock him under the tower, but unfortunately not quite the right angle. 
Can you see that? Uh, Leon knows that they're there, though. They have actually got the Viego on that River Scuttler, and they're going to go for the engage right now. Then Boxy has got that Severum of Crescendo, Ooh. but he just bops him down, flashes straight onto Funky, and gets the double kill going over to Lucky, who backs away with Phantomless chasing him down. That'll be the flash coming through. Leona 302, by the way. What is it with Leonas and getting every single kill today? They're just murder machines today in the EU Masters. Leona throwing down the sunlight. This is pretty greedy, honestly, from, from Trick Tier. You know you don't have support from your team. You know where your jungler is. He's nowhere to be seen. But so much damage right there. The heal coming through from Funky a little bit too late to save his, his friend in the Alistair. But as you say, double kill for, for Leona is probably not... Oh, we got more fighting, never mind. Madly has got that Cyclone available, knocking plenty of people up here. It gets the double, the damage is big, and it goes down, Phantomless. And in the meantime, Tax is still ready to go. Paulson looking to get some AoE damage off. Scarface just down. There's a double kill for Paulson. Leon will be forced to flush over the wall. It should be an easy take of the Rift Herald here. In the meantime, no one prepared to go for the Dragon in response from PTA. And honestly, tricked. Kind of doing super well right now. Yeah, this is this is where you get those people on Twitter type. Why am I watching a scream on the EU Masters stream? That's I'm predicting it, and that's th this game is just pure bloodbath. Everyone's just fighting, contesting everything, limit testing all the way. Fortunately for German representatives, it's not working out in their favor. It's actually starting with Paulson getting caught out of position, but his team is around to collapse. <laughs> Use the honey fruit. <laughs> Tax is still jungling, man. He finished off his grump. <laughs> oh my goodness. Tax is just like, the, the Tax is like, there's, there's no way you escape, right? You're, 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 <laughs> yeah. just, you're just giga dead. Straight up. A bit of disrespect, man. Always got to put respect on the Paulson. Make sure he survives long enough there, and is the power of the Wukong Cyclone, as you mentioned, really, really strong in these skirmishes. The Voxley has got the Severum and Crescendo. He's got the Severum and Crescendo, mate. That is a bit of a risk. In the meantime, uh, yeah. Ooh. Okay, never mind. You know what? Shut up. Shut up, big scoundrel. You don't know what you're talking about. Funky absolutely bops him on the head. Well, that is also just Tristana for you. Aphilios, definitely scary, but maybe needs a bit more items to really put that punish down. And unfortunately for him, it's not going to be enough against the Trists. As Trick now moving into the mid side, they do have the Herald, but a lot of people are collapsing here from Penta. What is Paulson doing, man? He's walking out pretty far. He is, and that comes the Cannon Barrage. Tax are forced to flash away. Funky making his way over as well. Tricked, uh, tricked are legit oh. trying to 3v5 right now. They get away from that Cassiope to ultimate. There is low HP bars across the board. Can Paulson go for it? Lucky drops down. It's a shutdown over to Viego. As uh, Rolf Chin finds himself in that Leona form. That's the Cyclone coming through from Madly. He's got the second one that takes down Scarface. I tell you what, tricked were feeling it. And they got rewarded. They actually genuinely came out on top. I have no idea how that worked. Uh, but either way, this game is just ridiculous. Both teams are just looking for every opportunity to fight right here. I don't think they're necessarily the smartest fights, but that doesn't matter. We've got a very entertaining game on our hands now. Lucky, definitely feeling lucky in that way. He's, he's giving over his shutdown. But uh, aside from that, you know what? We've just got more fighting. Maddie's going to go out this time. He doesn't have flash, remember. Doesn't have that cyclone either. The teleport surely is going to spell the end of the day here. Ooh. He's dead. Shut down. Yeah, shut down over to Rolf. No, but he's dead, though. He's oh, dead. he's dead. <laughs> but is that oh a shut goodness. down back? Is that a shut down back over to Madly? No, it's not. No. That's the uh, that's the power ignite right there. Even 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 a champion like Viego can't survive through burning when he's low on health. Cuts the healing down on the reset, and that just makes him tick down. A decent trade back, honestly, all things considered. As the attention to the top side means that bot side of the map is now opened up for tricks. Triangle taking the dragon, then Moxley was able to take that tower as well alongside those plates. Yep, five plates in the back pocket of the Felios. In the meantime, everything that was going on, it is just plate donation day. <laughs> and then Voxnay picks up a huge amount of gold. I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see if he's not that far behind Funky at this point in time, even despite his scoreline, because of the plates that were gifted over to him. He has gone for the Gale Force build this time as well. I guess to negotiate some of the engage and some of the problems that he may face in terms of positioning. Yeah, but I think it, sorry, I think it makes sense when you don't have as much to protect you as well. You know, like his team is very much going forward, and he's gonna kind of look after himself a little bit. And Gale Force will help with that. It is only a three. Somehow, Penta do this despite looking like they are like 
a fish out of water in these fights. They're still only like 3k behind. It feels like it should be 10 times more than that right now, but... 3.5k uh, at 12 minutes is fairly significant. Is it, is it, yeah, just, to be fair, it I'm feels like game's still, out there. I'm not going to lie, it feels like the game's a little bit further along than the 12 minutes, <laughs> yeah. but no, it is only 12 minutes into the game, so you, you're right. right. Yeah, honestly, it feels like it's been going on a lot longer just because of how much fighting we've had. We've had so many team fights. We have 17 kills, for goodness sake. Like, absolutely nice stuff from both these teams. They just don't stop fighting. That's not something you usually see during the lane phase, so fair enough. Fair enough. But it is going to be Trick setting up for the for the top side of the map right here. Just getting all this vision down and then playing towards the top side for those plates for the Moxney. Yeah, we have got uh, one minute until the plates drop. Um, Den Voxney just goes in here. Love and that's the Realm Warp coming through. They're going to try and catch Scarface out. Paulson teleported directly on top and Den Voxney will pick up the kill. I mean, we have seen a lot of face tank Aphelios in this uh, tournament today. And it hasn't, isn't going to stop in this game. And the engage comes through onto Lucky. Flashes on, get kept alive by the heal for the time being. Lucky still going as Rolfchen desperately looking for the reset, but won't find it as Paulson's on a rampage. Leon drops a double kill for the rise here. And Taxa just looking to get onto Funky, but in the meantime, it's a few seconds to grab as many plates as possible. Dinvoxing should pick up one more before they drop down. And that's a load of gold over to our Aphelios. Denvoxne is a very, very rich boy right now. Tricked winning out on all of these team fights, and he's getting his hand on solo gold with the plate. 6.3k. 6.3k gold. 6.4 now for Aphelios. He's going to get even more when that tower dies. Compared to Funky, who's who's chilling. Like, he's just been farming. He's, he's, he's doing fine, but it's a 2,000 gold difference. Oh, my goodness. Phantom, let's go for the 1v1 here. Has found it. Will find the kill onto Denvoxne. Denvoxne locked up for too long in that Cassiopeia ultimate. No way out of it without the cleanse. And uh, Phantomless will happily take a little gold injection because as you were talking about the gold that Denvoxne has, he's not even the richest on his team. Paulson is yeah. flooded with gold at about 7,000 at this stage in the game. Which Absolutely is a third of his nothing. entire team's gold, really. No, not even that, sorry. A quarter of his entire team's gold. Oh, Taxa. Yeah, Phantomless got no ult. Got no hope. It's gonna go down. Had that flash, but I'm not sure it allowed him to escape Taxa there. And Taxa himself on a killing spree, so that's pretty good. Yeah, that Divine Sundra build on Trundle that you tend to see more nowadays does give him more offensive threat compared to what you would have in the past from Trundles who would normally just go full tank. The fact that Sundra is in the meta, you know, getting that Sheen item. Sheen items have always been so good on Trundle because he just permanently gets active on that Spellblade with his Q spam. So nice. And yeah, you just got to respect the damage coming through from him. He's a pretty scary boy, honestly, once he reaches that first item. Paulson's just going to clear this mid wave out. It's all he's been doing all game, just soaking those waves up. 161 CS right now in a super strong spot overall. Uh, tricked, uh, looking pretty good. It's a shame that they uh, they aren't going further in the competition here because you can see that when they're, when they're playing and firing on all cylinders, they look like a super strong team. Although maybe Penta just haven't had the best tournament here. Yeah, I think this game's uh, a bit fiestry as well. Um, this, I don't think we'll see the next game where there's a lot on the line be quite as uh, quite as crazy as this one. Both teams are uh, yeah. having fun for their last game a little bit here, uh, which is nice to see. And it's uh, it's definitely entertaining, definitely bloodthirsty. And as you said, though, tricks definitely way far ahead in this one. Five thousand gold, at sixteen minutes. It's pretty nutty. Great team fighting tools as well. Great collapse. Great dive. Great engage. It's going to be hard for PJ to stand the bleeding in this one. Yeah, we talked a little bit about it as well. Like when it comes to how they play these team fights out, you just have that like absolute cacophony of CC that you can throw the way of Penta, and that just that in itself protects the uh, Aphelios. Just that yeah. that pure chain CC that you can throw into a team fight just makes it more difficult to lock down the Aphelios, and, and, and you know, and find that angle onto him to take him down. You can see Funky almost caught out by Lucky there. Good position. On the mid lane tier one though, Phantomless is committing to a mid top lane tier one take and that Rift Herald gets dropped. Second Dragon up, that is something that has been thrown to the wayside this game. Soul will be delayed pretty significantly just due to teams not putting as much priority on that Dragon as they may have done in other games. 
This game might not even reach the point where we see Soul. There's so much gold going down right here. Tricked us so far ahead. It's crazy. That is going to be second drag. Two towers in the mid as well. Traded for basically scraps on the top side for Phantomless. Very happy with that one if you're tricked. Got a nice reset timing in for Madly as well. We can then go back to the top and catch this wave. It's, it, it's all stations go at this point for Tricked. And the problem is as well for PTA, like, you're going to have to face check into Tricked at some point once the Baron spawns and things like that. And you're going to try and need to take control of the map again. You're not going to find the opportunity to do so because how do you do it? <laughs> who, who, who's going to face check? Who's going to, you know, you, see, you can see Phantom's doing it right there, just pressing Q in the bush. But if there was people in that bush, you, you're done, though. <laughs> you're still going to get caught. And that's where Tricked can really take over the game. I love how the pings coming to you from Trick. They are pri they're, they're predicting the oh Phantomless forced to flash Leon. That's going to be an alt pop by Taxa. Though the rest of his team, the Realm Warp comes through. Rolf shot on the sideline. Phantomless now nowhere to go, nowhere to hide, and gets bopped by the club from Taxa. Leon now will get caught out by the Cyclone. Will eventually pop that Unbreakable Will, but it doesn't matter because the rest of his team is ready to follow up. It'll be a nice pickup for Madly, and honestly, it's playing with your food at this point if you're tricked. Oh my goodness, Taxa. Chunking a fifth of the HP every single time, chasing Pulsar away. That's going to be an inhibitor tower that goes down because Funky can't back. It may even be close oh. to the end of the oh. game. It will be a one for one. It's a nice little pickup here. But tricked come out massively ahead in the engage. It's a shutdown. You got, you got a decent shutdown on your Tristana. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's probably somewhat insignificant in the grand scheme of the game. Trick to just picking up everything. All the towers that aren't in PJ's base are dead. We're not even 20 minutes into the game. This is just solo queue stuff, though, really. There's not anything to break down. You're just a bit greedy. You got the push in. What else is there to farm? Oh, I guess I'll walk into the enemy jungle. You can't really do that in a game like this, unfortunately. And Trick just way too far ahead, too much damage, perfect positioning, better team fight. Not much else to say. Loving that madly pick of the Wukong has been so impactful in some of these smaller skirmishes as well. And he's really being rewarded for having a rough lane, but finding those opportunities to kind of come out ahead. Taxi, as you said, to be a little careful here. Funky finally picks up the kill, but realistically, they, they don't mind losing a life. They gain so much from it. They gain so much time to get into that base and take down those extra towers because they were chasing the Tristana around the map for so long. 10k gold lead at 20 minutes. No longer am I going to say that's insignificant. Uh, it is ridiculously <laughs> significant. They have got a, a very large gold lead to work with, and it feels almost insurmountable for Penta. They are going to go 0-6 pending a miracle at the end of this European Masters, and Taxa was looking for another engage here. It's going to be Leona that finds it with that Zenith Blade. Actually turns back with a beautiful Ooh. solar flare coming out onto the main front line from Penta. Already those health bars are incredibly low, and Taxa decides to jump in. Moonlight Vigil will land onto Phantomless, but unfortunately can't chain them down. Then Boxney dives in with the Severum and the Crescendum. This is face tank Aphelios at his finest, but it's not him doing the damage. It's Paulson who is bopping on the rise. Drops down, game over, and it certainly is. Tricked will push down towards these Nexus Towers, and in a dominant, dominant display, will go out with a bang in the European Masters. 21 minutes on the clock. Tricked, unfortunately, not able to advance out of the group. Noble PTA. It was a good game. It was a fun game. It was entertaining as we say goodbye to Tricked and PTA from EU Masters. Great final performance from Tricked again. And I think it was nice from Taxa and Pulse. And you just heard Vandetto talk about it. They felt that their mid jungle was lacking a little bit. They felt that that was something that maybe they weren't playing as well as they wanted to. You had some excellent performances from Taxa and Pulse in this game, especially in some of the way they collapsed on those early skirmishes. And I think that, you know, if you want to, if Taxa and Pulse had a game to do themselves justice, that game certainly proved to be the case. Because it wasn't about Dimboxny, it was about Pulse and it was about Taxa. Those those are the two players that really stepped up here. Yeah, and I, it was just a very entertaining game at the end of the day. You know, yeah, both yeah. these teams knew there was nothing on the line. Uh, and I would say, you know, that they were playing for pride because especially, especially you know, for, for Penta's case, you know, they, they went 0-6. They've ended, they've ended their summer split first place in regular season and didn't win a single game since then in playoffs, in EU Masters. It's not great, but it was nice to still see them just up for having some fun, having a bit of dance party in mid lane as well at the beginning of the game.
yeah, I'm sure those guys will take a bit away and reflect from this. But I'm going to be honest with you, it speaks volumes to the competition that we have here at the European Masters. Such a strong seed from the Prime League actually struggling in these groups. It has been the case across the European Masters. We have got incredible talent here. These really are the stars of the future who you will be seeing on your LEC screens at some point soon, just like we saw Mad Lions of European Masters past. But for the time being, we're going to go to a short break. We're back. We'll analyze that game a bit further. And we have our final tiebreaker to round this group out. We'll see you soon. back to the Amazon European Masters. Tricked did absolutely slap that final game and unfortunately leaves Penta going 0-6. I think both teams have had a, a lot of experiences to take away here from the European Masters. Tricked clearly, you know, I think firmly places the third seed, third team in this group. I think, you know, reflected by the scores and Penta unfortunately unable to get on the board. Uh, but speaking of Penta, Rolf Chen is with us from Penta soon anyway to have a chat with us about uh, this uh, this European Masters. So, uh, Rolf Chen, uh, hi, nice to speak to you. I know it hasn't been the European Masters that you were hoping for. Um, in fact, really, I think from the regular season, it maybe hasn't been kind of the performances you were hoping for. Uh, what do you guys take away from this? What do you guys take away from the European Masters, even with a 0-6 scoreline? I mean, uh, not going so well is a nice way of putting it, I guess. Um, <laughs> I think that I'm very, I mean, we are all very disappointed, but 
I mean, if I can maybe let you guys in a little bit on our story um, this entire year, we were basically, I mean, it was kind of a conscious decision to go into a masters the way we did. And I think that this decision kind of led to um, a little bit our break in performance from summer. So basically, when you play in a team, a lot of times when going into summer, you just ignore a lot of problems. You put bandages on problems, you ignore problems. And this way, you have a better performance, uh, especially if, an, if you have an identity. For example, the entire summer, the reason that we um, went first place, I think, is just because we had a really good idea of who we are as players, and we just executed towards that level. Now, before your masters, we were like we were facing a decision after the, we lost the final. We could say, "All right, let's just continue this road. You know, let's just um, keep playing towards that identity, and probably would look better at your masters." But then we would put success short term over improvement long term, and. Yeah, we really tried to turn it around. We completely changed our way of playing before the tournament, tried to play for top, tried to play for mid. And I'm honestly not that surprised that, um, and not because it's just, it's a completely new way of playing. We didn't have so much time to practice it and the other teams were just straight up better. Well, it's a very stiff competition here in e Masters, so there's absolutely no shame in struggling against uh, against the other teams. <laughs> I want to ask, since, since it's been, since, since you finished first in the regular season, it's been a bit of a downward trend for you guys. And I know that can kind of just suck, really, as a player. So I want you to tell me what has been your favorite moment of the summer split for you, whether domestically, e Masters, whatever it is. What, what are you thankful for? What are you grateful for? What has Lee given you this split? I mean, that's a really good question. I wish I could smile a little bit more right now. You know, I'm a really happy guy. Usually I'm really positive, um, but I just feel so bad right now because we just blew our chance. But um, to your question, this entire journey with this team has been the best journey of my entire career. We, I wanted to get people here who not only value playing League of Legends, but who also want to build a life for the future and grow as like a group, you know? And while this... Um, we just hucked it out after this. Honestly, there's no bad feelings. I, we, we are a really nice team and we the entire approach has been to grow as players, grow as people. And that has been my favorite moment. All these times where instead of flaming each other, we were hugging each other all this time. We just went out yesterday playing soccer because we're going to play a soccer tournament on the 18th together. We just have so much fun together. There's so many nice memories, even though it really fucking sucks right now. I'm just very happy to be in this team. <laughs> Yeah, and honestly, I'll, you know, like I said, I don't think you guys should be ashamed. I don't think you guys should be sad. I, it, it, that's not going to help. Clearly, you guys will feel the way you do for some time. But it, the European Masters is one of the toughest competitions that we have. And, you know, sometimes you just don't perform when it counts. And that's competition for you. Like, you, you could have come here next week and you could have gone, you know, 3-0 in a week and it might have been a different story. So at the end of the day, sometimes it's just timing isn't in your favor. Sometimes you're just not playing well on the day. I don't think anybody is going to hold it against you, realistically. I've got one final question for you and it's more about your views on the european masters and the strength of the regions what what, what do you think in terms of uh, european masters which which region do you think really sticks out to you as strongest which region uh, do you think may have the the potential to take it all this time around uh, tough question i think it really depends on which team is able to play um towards their identity the strongest. I think if the LEC split with Fnatic or Mad Lions taught us one thing, it's if you have five players with the same idea who want to play the game in the same way, you have a lot of a big advantage um, in the game. I really admire the way that Fnatic and Mad Lions, for example, play the game. If I look at EU Masters now, a team to, that pops out to me personally is, for example, Giants, Vodafone Giants. I think they have this very clear job for everyone and they just go the same way about it every single game. So I think they will be um, tournament favorite, favorites, obviously K-Corp, um, K-Corp as well. Um, but they are in general just so many good teams. Uh, I think anyone can can kind of take it. And I think also that the regions are very close. Like I would kind of, I have so much to say on this subject, but I really think that being a team is more about having players who ha like follow a job and everyone understands the job and everyone is kind of a clutch player that is able to make the difference. And yeah, your Masters is a great tournament. You will find a lot of good players, obviously, that deserve to be, um, yeah, maybe in the LEC in the future. Giants would be my favorite kind of, I think they look really strong. But also, honestly, PDW, we scrimped them the entire um, split and I think they had a really good uh, showing. Um, I think they can take this group and also get very far.
yeah, well, as you said, you've set us up nicely because the next game of the day will be that tiebreaker between PDW and Mother Star Riders. Uh, honestly, this has been such a lovely interview. You're really well spoken. I think you have a really healthy mentality towards the game and the way you approach your teams. So I'm, I'm rooting for you. I hope you guys can reset and maybe find success in those future uh, splits in Prime League. And hopefully next time we see you, you'll be at the European Masters and you'll be the team that's going 6-0 and uh, getting out of those groups. Thank you for the lovely interview and you guys doing a great job. Um, I'm going to keep watching and cheering for all of you guys. Have a nice evening. <laughs> oh. We don't maybe him. maybe no I know <laughs> maybe one of my favorite interviews of my career honestly that was uh, that was actually really nice and he's wow. uh, clear, clearly has a really really lovely mentality towards his team and the game and it's nice to see players that are that well spoken and so I think mature about how they approach League of Legends as well because it is a sport you know at the end of the day in in, in some way shape or form you know and the way you need to approach it is very much like you would try and approach a sport and uh, clearly Penta even though it didn't work out for them what they were trying to do was again setting up for long term success and I, I think um i think those guys played really well but he did foxy cue us in for that final game of the night it's pdw versus mother star riders our seventh game of the day here it'll be deciding the first seed coming out of our group we'll see you soon